Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to this week's canning chat. You know me, I love to talk about canning. Get yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of iced tea, something cool. Yeah, get your favorite beverage. Let's sit down and let's talk about canning. We got some great questions this week um, and I hope that you enjoy them. Remember, if you have any questions regarding canning, um, please leave it in the comments section below and if I uh, answer it, or if I'm planning on answering it, I will say, you know, check back next week. And if um, you haven't seen all of the canning chat videos, I highly recommend going to the playlist above uh, and checking out because your answer might be there also. Okay, we are going to hit the ground running. I've got mm, just over two pages of questions. <laughs> are you ready? Our first question is from Lise Broston. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Just got told not to add vinegar to water in canner. Can it mess up my jiggler? I have never heard of vinegar messing up uh, a jiggler. I do not believe so, no. Um, what it can do is it can tarnish your rings if you put in too much. Um, a lot of people swear by it. Throw a comment down below, you guys, if you're one of those people that swear by it. And a lot of people don't swear by it. Be sure to tell me your point of view, okay? I don't swear by it. I find it to be an unnecessary step. We have hard water here. Um, so when I don't use it, it can't, my, my jars can get cloudy when I pressure can. However, after every single pressure canning session, I wash those jars anyway. So that cloudy film comes off when I wash my jars. I don't see the point in risking tarnishing my rings, which I've never had it where it doesn't tarnish my rings, okay? Um, I buy everything used for our canning, for our jars, you know, so the rings are used also. And I, I don't want to risk it, even though I've got a ton of them right now, thanks to a couple of really great subscribers. I don't want to risk it. It's not something that I want to just go through, you know, quickly. So I don't use vinegar. I've never found a need for it. Other people swear by it. So it's totally up to you whether you want to or not, but go very sparingly, very sparingly, okay? Um, it's just not necessary. Franny in West Virginia says, my question is, why is it not appropriate to pressure can tomatoes and tomato-based products? I've had people think I'm crazy water bath canning my tomatoes. I have good news, Franny. It is appropriate to do either or. You can water bath or you can pressure can your tomatoes. I will put three links down below for different ways to pressure can or water bath your tomatoes. Each link will have the instructions, the time, all of that fun stuff, the pressure um, for either water bath canning or pressure canning on that page. It's really great. So I prefer to pressure can. To me, it's just easier. It gives me a little more secure feeling. But if you want a water bath and you're good with it, go for it. Totally up to you. Okay. But I'll put those links down below. So be sure to check out, check them out. Okay. Kristen Wise. Question, how long should it typically take for my All-American to depressurize? I've read that there shouldn't be any steam coming from the vent when I take off the weight. However, when the gauge reads zero pressure, there still seems to be pressure in the pot because if I try to remove the weight, there is still steam. So, okay, I do know that an All-American takes uh, quite a bit longer than a Presto to depressurize. I mean, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours, depending. Um... So that I don't have a great answer for you, okay? But if you if the dial goes down to zero, um, let it sit for a while. Let it sit for a while still, because if you're still getting a vent of steam when you take the weight off, then that means it has not completely depressurized. So you want to keep an eye on that, okay? But because um, you want it to come down. So when it completely depressurizes naturally, then you can take that off. Um, you should not have a stream of steam coming out of it. And you'll learn as you use it more and more how long that will take, depending on what's going on. Um, and then just let it sit for five minutes and then take the lid off and just knock it back a little bit. Let it sit there for five minutes and then you can pull your stuff out without any worries. Sorry about the dogs. Beth H. says, when taking the processed jars out of the pressure canner, I sometimes find the bands to be very loose. Is it best to leave them as is, or should I be tightening the rings back down on the jar? I don't want to create a false seal. Um, if they're loose, just leave them be. Just I never tighten them. Um, just leave them be. It, they'll be fine or they won't, and that won't have much to do with it, okay? Um, and that, we're talking about regular, the metal 
disposable lids. Okay. It's a whole different ball game if you're using the reusable lids, but, um, just, just leave them be and you're good. Danielle Mar Mar Marqua. Did I do that? Danielle Marqua. Going to be making jam pretty soon with my mom's water bath canner that she gave me that she's had for years. My question is, what kind of burner can I use outside that I can use that pot on because my stove vent is too low? Okay, for a water bath canner, you're golden. Whatever kind you've got. If you have a turkey baster, if you have some kind of propane burner, if you have anything that'll bring the water up to boiling, it has to create boiling water. Put the lid on, bring the water up to a boil, and you're good. Congratulations, happy canning. Knack Morris. My sincerest apologies for not seeing this before. They've asked this three times. Um, what is the difference between powdered and liquid pectin? Can you use liquid when powder is canned for, is called for, and vice versa? Okay. The main difference, the main difference between liquid and powdered pectin is that when is when you add them to the jam or jelly. Okay. Uh, liquid pectin is added when the fruit is simmering. And, you know, after boiling for a while and powdered pectin is added earlier in the process, they are not really interchangeable. No. So I highly recommend that depending on your recipe or try finding a different recipe that calls for the pectin that you have. I hope that answered your question. Sorry for the delay. Sam asks, I just started canning and have a newbie question about the dial gauge for the Presto. The 11 PSI mark has a large marker. Are you at 11 PSI as soon as you touch the marker or after you reach the end of it? Um, when you get to it, when, when you get to it, don't, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Okay. When that needle hits that 11, you're at 11, you're at 11, you're good. Um, as a related question with all of the warnings that if you drop below the required pressure, you have to start over. I've been processing at one PSI above the required pressure to be safe. Is this a good idea or does it also cause problems? One PSI is not going to make or break you, okay? But it is completely unnecessary. Aim for that 11 if that's the goal and try to hold it 11. Find your sweet spot for that, not for 12. Um, if you go over over that, then you're risking siphoning. You know, it, it's just not a desired, pro it's not a desired impact to over process the food at a higher pressure than is needed for your elevation. So. If your 11 is where you're supposed to be, aim for that. Try to get to that. Anything over that does not make you any safer by any stretch. Okay? Great questions. Thanks for asking. Teresa Dean, our moderator extraordinaire, says, I do let my canner sit for five minutes. I take the weighted jiggler off once it has come down to room pressure. Then I will crack open the lid, tilt it some, and leave it that way for five minutes. Then all jars out on a towel. Is that too long to let them sit in the water? No, not at all. That is that is perfect. That is actually, to the previous question, my ideal situation for what you should do, okay? Um, leaving them overnight in the canner, leaving them for a few hours in the canner uh, can cause flat sour, okay? Because they're not cooling off at the, the speed that they need to. But you're talking about a matter of 5, 10, 15 minutes, right? Not a problem at all. It's actually preferred to help prevent any siphoning issues. So great example, Teresa. Good job. Dottie Truth Seeker says, question, if the band has a tiny ding, it, if a band has a tiny ding in it, can this be reused or will the band interfere with the lid sealing completely? If you can screw on that ring with no issues, okay, it's good. The ding does not matter. Um, yeah, I've had dings in my lids, never had a problem with them. So the ding doesn't matter if you can screw it on properly. You're good to go. Uh, the final question for tonight is from Albert Kleinman. Actually, it's from Darlene. <laughs> Darlene Kleinman. Uh, second time. I have had many jars that are cloudy on the inside. Haven't a clue what happened, but I know if I use them, I'll have ugly beans. Is it safe to use them? And any ideas to clean them? I've soaked them in vinegar and thought about a stick. Um, okay. She had two questions. This is one of them. I have, I have jars that are cloudy. They're never not going to be cloudy. You know, there, I, like I said, I get most of my jars used. Um, so some of them are just cloudy and that is their nature because of their age. Does it impact the, uh, food preservation? Not at all. Does it impact the aesthetics for you? Yes. 
But you know what? You're not there to look at them. You're not there to ogle them and go, oh, my pretty beans. No, you're there to eat them. So if they seal, they're good. They don't have to look pretty just like the chicken, right? That's why we have ugly chicken. It's not pretty, but it's good. So if your jar works, you're good to go. I don't have a way to get them on cloudy. I've got some that have been cloudy forever and will be cloudy forever. And I'm fine with that because they work. The next question Darlene had um, is a question that I've, I've answered, I think, once before. I'm not sure. But um, my thoughts on raw packing potatoes without added liquid. Um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned this before. They call It's one of the ways that they call dry canning. Um, and people are taking potato wedges and putting them in a jar and not adding liquid. And then pressure canning them. Um, I think it's foolish. I think it's remarkably foolish. So we have our processes and procedures for a reason. And it's because they've been tested and we know that they're safe. This is a root vegetable, okay? Of all the vegetables, don't mess with root vegetables. The liquid in the jars is a conduit to make sure that the heat reaches the proper temperature in the center of the product in the jar so that it kills off any bacteria, botulism, anything like that. Why mess with that? It makes absolutely no difference. Now, there's going to be somebody in here saying, I've been doing it in there. Great. Great. It's your kitchen, your rules, your problem, your responsibility. But I'm telling you that it's foolish. There's no need to do it. You are doing nothing. You know, it just, it's unsafe. It's remarkably unsafe. And I'm not a purist when it comes to canning, you guys. There are some things that I admit I'm rebel about, okay? And there are some videos up that show me rebel canning. But... Um, there's a line that you just don't cross and that's one of them in my opinion. So that's my opinion for what it's worth. Okay. That's this week's canning chat. You guys remember to leave any questions that you might have in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on any of the questions that were asked. I greatly appreciate you sitting down with me and chatting about canning. Cause you know, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Remember until next time, be safe.